on the trail to the Galabrae Standing Stone in Bathgate, Scotland in Gaelic known as Bothgate I've just ventured all the way down that hill there roasting hot day and I'll wait to see in our historic site As you can see, the stones in the distance. The Galabrae standing stone they call this. Often it gets mixed up with uh, another mena here or monolith nearby uh, called the Clinking Stain. But that's factually incorrect because the Galabrae standing stone is obviously still standing. The Clinking Stain was um, removed by a former tenant in the 19th century. So we're going to go and show you it right now. This stone has been here for centuries. Centuries and centuries. And they think it could be a marker to an ancient historic site, which is just a little bit further up, called Cairn Papel, which we're also going to show you later on in this video. Look at that view. Welcome to Scotland. Mate, it's actually bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's a hot day here in Scotland, 21 degrees. Look at that view, mate. The ancient Galabrae standing stone overlooking the town of Bathgate. This ridge here that overlooks the town, 860 feet above sea level. As you can see, the um, one side of it's been cut because apparently they used to think it was a lot thicker. And over the years, half of it's slid off. But it faces directly out onto Bathgate. The ground underneath has gotten quite soft over the years as well, so I think they've had to build back into it. Make sure it stays standing. The Galabrae standing stone. Now, there's a second stone in a westerly direction, about 60 to 70 metres down this way, which we're going to go and show you as well. Um, and they believe that these two stones together might have been an ancient gateway to the site that I referred to earlier called Cairn Papel which is just about a mile up ahead north, so up this direction and they used to believe that maybe in the in the olden days with no roads and signposts that they erected these two stones for ancient travellers or ancient tribes like the Picts to maybe be aware of the fact that there's an ancient site up ahead and let them know that it's there Investigators said that it could possibly be a gateway to Cairn Papel. So I'm now going to go down and see if you can find the second one so I can get you a little bit of point of reference. That one's there. The second one's down here. And directly north is Cairn Papel, up there, just over that hill where we're going, is Cairn Papel. So let's go and see if we can find the, the second stone. Ross, coming. 70 metres they say. These stones are one of 50,000 standing stones said to exist in the world. 50,000. This is the first one, first two that I've visited. I'll be visiting many, many more. There's a lot of mystery surrounding standing stones. A lot of conjecture. But the fact remains, they are ancient signposts. 
and their main purpose I suppose is up for debate It's a shame that this one's been knocked down because the two of them together would have probably meant made a little bit more of a sight <laughs> That one was taller than I thought it was going to be, that one was about 5 foot off the ground and you could see how it just had a, a view right over the ridge you can easily imagine how if people were looking for a certain area and they didn't have any directions, maybe maps, like old maps they would use signposts and monoliths like that to let them know they were going on the right path Stone up in the distance there We're trying to find the stump This looks like a natural fire possibly happened here we're trying to find a stump that was 70 metres in a westerly direction, but this is west for the second stone to give it a little bit of reference. But unfortunately, Ross, I fuck, I found it, lad. Wow. Oh, hidden. Unreal. It's definitely not bigger than that one. So, for reference, you can see. Bathgate in the background. That stone there and that stone there combined would have acted as a signpost almost. about nine graves I believe dug in circles all around a large mound which is actually itself called Cairn Papal Hill and we're going up and it's a tourist destination so you need to pay in get a ticket for 7 50 each me and my pal are just going to go get a wee tour of it right now This was volcanic rock, which was used for weapons and to scrape dust off of their clothes. Uh, red deer antler. Uh, antlers kind of, it's kind of like a bit like plastic to be honest, it's quite a bit softer. Yeah. I don't really fully really understand the physics of it, but the softer hammer would take out a longer, thinner yeah, flame, yeah, yeah. which could also be it's used just be small a, parts. Yeah, so you're you don't to, want to chip the full thing off, of well, course. Well, you don't want to break your tools, so you want to be able to control it and take... Is it small, quite hard? It's like hard, dense, hard. No, quite hard to get the right the right amount off of it. It can be, yeah. You just need to skim it. Takes, it takes a bit of practice. I mean, I'm not an expert flint napper at all. When you see somebody that's really good, yeah. they can be halfway through making a beautiful arrowhead and still break it. It just does yeah. happen. Um, right. So what I'm doing here, uh, I'm popping my fingers over the bit I'm going to get my blade out of so it doesn't ping away and we lose it or it blinds anybody as well. And also, um, yeah, also what I'm trying to do is go as close to the edge as I can so that it's a nice thin flake because that makes it easier to work with at the next stage. If it's too thick, it's going to be impossible to to work with. So, right, I'm just going to... go. So it's not quite as clean a flake as it could be, but it's only fully sharp. So... So you said it was almost glass-like? Yeah, it's... it's Chemically and structurally very well, that similar slice through to, that, yeah. to glass. Yeah, um, when Europeans were out colonising the world and leaving, so you can see it'll, you know, it'll cut through a bit of, bit of leather, no problem at all. Wow. Um, that's a really, really fragile edge. That natural edge, though, it's not gonna, it's not gonna keep its edge when it's been used as a tool. So again, I'm just, I'm just using a, a bit of copper in a stick. Uh, something that modern flint nappers use quite often in the past prior to metal working they would probably use the point of a red deer antler basically so basically you can either do it on your thigh or in the palm of your hand so taking this flake that's 
that's what you call a percussion flake. Now what I'm doing is pressure flaking and you can use that to like further shape it, give it a nice feathered or sort of serrated edge. It's going to be less sharp but far more durable. Burial site of Cairn Papal Hill, 3000 BC. This place is dated back to, you can see the circles, graves, and the view of this place and where it's situated on the land. It's off our seat, off our seat in the distance. And this main bit that we're going to show you is the main burial chamber that's dated back to the Bronze Age and the man found inside could possibly have had Nordic roots they found a mask on him made of white oak and it is the source and the most ancient part of this site because as you can see some view all the way up here everything is about around about it now this was thought to be the first henge monument in Scotland because Stonehenge isn't actually a henge the way that the ditches are built was this is actually the first proper official henge in Scotland you can see the ridge all around and then graves graves there was fire found thousands of years apart and this is obviously the centre landmass of the graves you can see there Cairn Papal developed over thousands of years initially as a circular henge, an enigmatic earthwork within a ditch, probably the focus of ceremonial gatherings. Later, three successive burial cairns were built here. The site was at the centre of a wide network of prehistoric ritual sites in the area. So they've marked the outside layer as one, and then the inner grave is two, three, and then the outer layer, which I think is the 500 BC it dates back to, which was the last layer. And um, that's number four. Below the capstone from the small cairn being removed by archaeologists in 1947, it is now one of the stones behind you on your left, marking the edge of the largest cairn. So, one of the stones in here, the grave was pretty poor, and they had to remove the stone, and they've replaced it on the outer rim. And you can see it right there. I've just spotted that. You can tell because it's got a ridge. And it's got that crooked ridge that you can tell the, the stone snapped off from it. That one there, which I'll take you up to after. Christianity arrives 2,000 years after the burial at Cairn Papal. New graves were dug by Christians. It was not uncommon for early Christians to reuse places which were important to their ancestors. Which is the white graves, you can see in the distance there. They are set east to west which is how they know that there were Christian graves because all Christian graves have uh, the same alignment east and west are the graves Did you know Cairn Papal was mined for silver the Hilderstein silver mines ran from 1606 to 1614 it was claimed they yielded the purest quality silver in Scotland yeah, um, me and Ross were met by a guy who said that the crown jewels I suppose they to have been a piece of the crown jewels are supposed to, to have been found around here which I'm not sure how factually correct that is but I think it's just down there Amazing Oh it literally just tells you that Possibly used to make the Scottish crown jewels Later mines operated in the area until the mid 1800s On a clear day it's possible to see goat fell on Arran looking west so that's west, can't see clear enough but obviously that's the sea there and you can see Arran and then obviously as I said the complete opposite direction you've got Arthur's seat so you've got big mountains there and then you've got a wee bit of a space and then you've just got Arthur's seat sitting out on its own on the horizon to the left of it you can see Edinburgh in the distance in the east you may be able to see Bass Rock pictured in the 4th and 4th so as you can see, the fact that this site is above everything within our about a 20 mile radius it just shows you the significance of this site and it was obviously built here for a purpose
Let's go in and see the graves. You coming? Yeah. We ladder. Mate, this is quite the entrance to a cave, man. Spooky. Oh, you can smell it. Mate, this is the smell of five thousand years. Mate, we are literally entering an ancient burial site. Look at this place, bro. Wow, this is unbelievable, man. This place just stinks of history, doesn't it? It's a shame that you've got the dome over it, but obviously it's to protect it. The oldest grave at Cairn Papo included two wooden objects, a mask and possibly a club. So that's the guy that possibly had Nordic origins. And they thought that maybe Nordic signs and different things were left here over time, like pilgrimages, and as markings to show respect for different cultures and just to let them know that they've they've been at this ancient site. I think that grave just does the talking for itself. There's a wet dance man, isn't there? Yeah. Absolute scale the 4,000 years ago, an exceptionally important person was buried in this grave. The oldest burial at Cain Papal. Later, cyst burials were also discovered here. 4,000 years ago? When the oldest grave was excavated, the only human remains archaeologists found were slight stains on the floor where the body had lain. The enamel crowns of teeth. Evidence indicates that flowers may have been scattered over the body, together with a wooden mask and club also found in the grave. Aye, they said that was white oak, the mask. These probably had special meaning for the grave builders. Above, some time after the first grave was constructed, two cis burials were placed here, covered by, small, covered by a small cairn. And the guy told us that it was then removed, and this was built over the top of it. So next to that big stone, there used to be three other stones the same size of it. And that was the original site, and then they got rid of that and built the grave here, and then buried the person inside it. R.I.P. Yeah? Literally an ancient warrior, mate. This is the second grave. So two graves. There was originally three. One of the most historic sites in Scotland. Here on Papal Hill. I'm head back up into the sunlight. Unfortunately that tower there is the only modern thing you can see besides that tent and us. These graves had traces of Germanic Nordic peoples, Neolithic peoples that travelled from different locations in the world to this site and buried their dead to show respect and to mark for their own reasons, they wanted to bury their dead, maybe they had relative importance. I don't know, you can only speculate what relation they had to this site. But there was nine graves found, which is what these circles are. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there's some more around the other side. Um, Cairn Papal is not one of Scotland's most known beauty spots because unfortunately it sits within a railway system uh, between Glasgow, Edinburgh and Stirling so it's not got easy access to it for tourists if you will so I imagine a lot of the people who come here are just people that know about this site and know about the history here otherwise it's, you wouldn't exactly pass it uh, in your car it's just uh, one country road that runs down it um, but what a location as you can see behind me um, stunning. Um, one interesting 
fact to leave you on is that the Romans came here and they called this site Media Nemeton, which means Central Sanctuary. And it means that it's the Central Sanctuary of the highest order of Druids. Um, that's what they called it. And the Romans also said that this area of Cairn Papel was a world-renowned wisdom school of Scotland and the historic learning site. So, many, many different peoples came to this site. And just sitting here right now, it's, I've been here for about an hour, two hours. Um, you can feel a vibe here. It's obviously a beautiful day, but there's definitely a spiritual aspect to this place. Um, if you're that way inclined, and it's beautiful. Obviously, with the fact that there's so many graves here, it adds that aspect to it. Um, but it's very tranquil. Inside the the mound, it felt very. You could smell the the wet uh, ground. You could just try to picture somebody for thousands of years ago's grave and why was such things done. You know what I mean? The people have got to have been of some importance to create a location like this for centuries upon centuries different people coming back to the same site to bury their dead that person at the beginning must have been of some importance and it's beautiful it's beautiful bit of flint it's been carved in an arrowhead. That's what they had done back in the day that this site was active. We now come to the end of Cairn Papel Hill. Beautiful site, sacred site, ancient site. There'll be many more like this to come. We've had an absolutely outstanding day. Signing off for Cairn Papel Hill.